What's up guys, Mizzo Frizzo from Pitchfork Academy here, and in this Unreal Engine 5 Blueprints tutorial, I'm going to show you how to open and close a door. So if I go over to this door and press E, you'll see it will open. I can press E again to close it, open and close, like so. And because I'm showing you how to interact with this other blueprint, in this case a door, I'm going to show you how to interact with literally any other kind of blueprint you want to have in your game, such as this light switch on the wall here. So literally any kind of blueprint you want to have in your game that is interactable, I'm going to show you how to set that up so that you can interact with them. So without further ado, guys, let me show you how to do this. Alrighty guys, now the first thing I'm going to do is create a new project using the third person template and I'm going to make sure to check starter content because the starter content contains a door that we're going to use and I'm going to hit create. And now that we're in the editor, we're going to head on down to the starter content folder and props. And in props, you'll see these two static meshes that we're going to use, SM door and SM door frame. And the first thing I'm going to do is open up SM door because this, for some reason, doesn't come with any collision. So we're going to click collision up the top here and add box simplified collision. And now you can see that that door has collision, so we won't just be able to walk right through it. We can save that and close that. And the next thing I'm going to do is go to my content folder and right click and create a new folder. And I'm just going to call it blueprints. And I'm going to create a parent class inside this folder blueprints for all of our interactable objects. I'm going to try and uh, sort of give you a good practice here because when we interact with something, we don't just want to be able to interact with a door. We want to be able to interact with a light, with a switch over here that does something else, whatever you want to be able to interact with. Uh, so I'm going to create a new blueprint class of type actor and I'm just going to call it BP underscore interactable, something like that. And I'm also going to create a blueprint interface to interface with any of these interactable blueprints. So I'm going to right click and go to blueprint, blueprint interface, and let's just call this BPI underscore interact, like so. Open this up and you'll see that it immediately will ask you to rename the first function here and I'm just going to call the function interact like so. We can compile and save this and that is literally all we are going to do in here. A blueprint interface is essentially a way of just very quickly casting to another blueprint without actually needing to cast because a cast creates a hard reference which means that that blueprint that you have casted to will always be loaded and it is not very performant. So um, it kind of means that you'll be carrying a reference around. Say you wanted to interact with this cube uh, and then you run off to another level in your game um, your character would be carrying around this cube loaded up the entire time uh, which doesn't really make any sense so a blueprint interface is a way of sharing functions between blueprints that are not necessarily related to each other so now that we've created this we can open up our bp interactable and go to class settings here and i am going to go to interfaces over here and drop this down and look for our bpi interact under implemented interfaces and now you can see that it has been added in the interfaces over here um, we're not going to use the function in this parent blueprint we're just going to compile and save this and then we are going to right click on BP interactable and create child blueprint class. And let's just call this one BP underscore door and open this up. Um, now you'll see that it has the interface here because, because it has inherited it from the parent class. And this means that we can override what this function does in any of the child classes of BP interactable. So if you made a BP light switch, you could then give it different functionality in there. So we are going to override this function in BP door. But before we do that, let's add our door components to this blueprint. So let's add one component, static mesh, and let's call it our door frame. And over here in the details panel, we will search for door 
and select the door frame right here. And we have our door frame. And immediately I notice that this is way too wide. I'm actually going to change the scale here on the X axis to 0 0.25 and just make this door frame a bit more realistic like so. I'm also going to add another static mesh and we will call it door. And I'm going to actually parent it to the door frame like so. Just click and drag it onto the door frame. And then I will look for our SM door here. And we just need to change the location on the Y axis here to, I believe 45, and it will be lined up like so. Now, all we are literally going to do with this door when we interact with it is change the relative rotation of this component right here, the door component of the blueprint. And how we can do that is first, we are going to need a box collision that we can overlap with so that we can interact with this object. So we can also add a box collision and I'm just going to call it um, interaction box, something like that. And I'm gonna leave it parented to the door because I want mine to move wherever the door moves um, so that you know we don't have to get close to the door frame to interact with the actual door itself. So we can select our interaction box and we can move it and we can scale it sort of depending on our needs and how we want this to work. If you wanted this to be able to be interacted with from anywhere around the door like so, you could scale it up just a bit larger than the door. And then as you can see, when the door moves, that collision box moves and you'd be able to interact with it from anywhere inside that collision box. I'm going to set mine up slightly different. I am actually going to make it, whoops, I've still got the door selected. Uh, I'm going to make it so that the player needs to be near the door knob to open and close this door. So I'm gonna scale it like so, and I'm gonna center it about on the door knob. And now, as you can see, the player will just have to be anywhere near that door knob to open this up. And that's pretty much all we need to do in here. Uh, we can now set up the logic to open and close this door. And once again, I'm going to try and show you some good practices here because I've seen some of the door tutorials on uh, YouTube and they leave a little bit to be desired. So I'm actually going to delete all these nodes in the event graph. We don't need those. And then down here in the interfaces on interact, we can either right click on this and implement event, or we can simple, simply double click on this and it will bring this event interact into our event graph like so. Now, we are going to use a timeline to open and close the door, but we also want a Boolean just to say whether the door is open or closed. So I'm just going to um, create a new variable and I'm going to call it door open question mark of type Boolean and uh, this will be false by default. And what I'm going to do is actually uh, grab this Boolean and a not Boolean. And I'm gonna hold B and click to get a branch, plug this in here. And so if our door is not open, we will execute this code. And then if it is, if it is open, we will execute this code. And the first thing we're going to do is actually set this boolean like so so if the door is not open so if it's closed it will then be open and if it uh was open <laughs> now it will not be open if that makes any sense uh so what we can do after this is we can add a timeline and i'm going to call this open open close timeline something like that and if the door was closed and now it's open, it's going to play. And if it uh, wasn't not open, <laughs> it will reverse like so. And we can double click on this open close timeline and we can add a float track and let's call it open close. 
uh, something like that. Uh, let's call it door angle because that's a bit more accurate. And I'm going to change the length here to say 0 0.3 seconds, something like that. I'm going to shift and click twice, hold shift and click twice on here to add these two curve floats. And I can change the first one's time to zero and the value to zero and change the second one's time to the maximum time of this float track, which is 0 0.3 and the value to 90, which is 90 degrees. And then I'm going to click these two icons here so that I can see both of my curve floats here and I can select both of them and right click and change them to auto, which as you can see here, just smooths them out a little bit. And that's fine. We uh, don't need to do anything else in here in the timeline. We can close the timeline, which as you can see here, opens up in a new tab next to your event graph and construction script and viewport. So we can close that tab. And now you can see that this timeline has this little output here, which is of type float. So if you've never seen a timeline before, what it does is when it plays, it plays this timeline over time, which will take 0 0.3 seconds to execute. And at any point in that timeline, that output will output a float somewhere on this curve. So at about here, it will output a float of 32. And about here, it will output 64 and all the way up to 90 at the 0 0.3 seconds. So this will play this timeline and as it updates, 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 it will set the door angle as that angle. So on update here, what we can do is we can grab our door and drag it out and then we can set relative rotation, set relative rotation, plug this into the update and we can right click on this rotator pin and split the struct pin. And now we split this into the X, Y, and Z, and we can plug the door angle into the Z like so. So now we just need a way of calling this BPI interact event from our character when we overlap with our door. And this is why I created this parent class BP interactable, because now if we go to our third person folder and blueprints and open up our BP third person character, I'm going to find some empty space and I'm just going to find the E key. And I'm also going to find a node called get overlapping actors. And I'm going to change the class filter here to our interactable BP interactable and drag off of this array output here and get a copy. And because this is index zero, this means that this will get the first overlapping actor of type BP interactable. And then off of here, we can just call our interact message. And now whenever we overlap with something that is a child of this BP interactable class, uh, we can call that interact function on it. And as a bonus, I might just show you how to quickly make a light switch that uh, is also interactable. Um, I believe the starter content already has a blueprint, so we can very, very quickly set that up. So this should all be working now. If I grab my BP door and put it out into the world like so, and I hit play, I can go over here and if I go anywhere near the door knob and press E, it will open and I can't close it from here, but I can close it from right here next to the door knob like so. And because of the way this is set up, it means that um, I can't quite press the key fast enough, but if I press it fast enough, you'll see that it just reverses that timeline and closes it like so, because it knows with that Boolean, whether it's open or closed, just trying to get it to work this way. And it does nice. And the collision works on that door. So we can't go through the door. We can open it and then we can go through. Nice. Now, uh, just as a bonus, I'll show you how to interact with a light switch because um, it is really important that you set things up 
in this kind of way when you create a game you want things to be scalable you don't just want to be able to interact with the door you want to be able to interact with the light switch anything else um, that is around and also it is good practice to use a boolean like this in case you are making something for multiplayer and say someone joins the game you know five minutes after you've opened this door you want the door to be open for them as well because they weren't here for this event when the door opened um so you want a boolean inside of that door so that um you know you can put in some code there on a rep notify uh to make sure that that door is open for all players in a multiplayer game i'm not getting super into that right now um but that is kind of why i've set this up and there will be another tutorial on that coming up shortly okay let's create uh, another blueprint that is a child of interactable something else that we can interact with if we go to our starter content and blueprints folder uh, you'll find this blueprint wall sconce which is a light that uh, mounts on the wall but the first thing i'm going to do is grab it and drag it into our blueprints folder up here and copy here so I'm going to make a copy in our blueprints folder and then I'm going to make it a child of BP interactable. So I'm going to open it up and I'm going to go to class settings and at the very top of the details panel here you can see the parent class. I can change the parent class to BP interactable like so. And now this is a parent, this is a child of BP interactable. It has this interact event right here and all we're going to do is change the intensity of this light component uh, down to zero when we interact with it so this is going to be on by default um, so let's go to our event graph and let's double click our interact interface and get our interact event and um, let's just figure, figure this out so we can make a boolean called light on and I'll compile this because I want to change light on to true because I happen to know that this light is on by default. If we drag this out into the world and I'm just going to rotate it so it lines up with the wall, you can see that this light is on. You can also go to the construction, construction script and you can see that uh, it is setting the intensity to 1000 in the construction construction script excuse me um, so this light is on by default but if we want this to switch on and off we can get a branch on light on and if the light is on we want to set this to false and if the light wasn't on we want to set this to true and then what we can do is grab our point light here and set intensity and if the light was on we're going to set it to zero i'll duplicate this node here by pressing ctrl d and i'll plug this into the target there as well and if it was um, off we will set this to true and set this back to 1000 like so and we will need a way of overlapping with this, um, now you would normally have a light switch, but all I'm going to do is uh, create another box collision. Um, I will add a box collision here, and I'm just going to make it kind of extend down below the light, like so. So if we get anywhere near the front of the light sort of below it um, and you know you may want to even just have this extend up a little bit in case the light is really low down you can see that box collision there so anywhere that we get inside of that box collision right there so we've now got these two children of bp interactable and we can now interact with both of them without needing to carry a reference to either of them inside of our character because we have our blueprint interface which just allows us to go over and interact with a light or a door like so and these are some very good practices here guys if this tutorial has been of any use or value to you or whatsoever please hit like and subscribe and i will see you on the next one